In this boiling Middle East stands Lebanon. There's no other country in this region that has felt the spillover effect of the Syrian war. They stand off between Saudi Arabia and Iran as much as Lebanon due to its geographical and demographic specificity. From refugees' burden, sectarian tension, to terrorism. To talk about all these issues, we are pleased to host Lebanon Foreign Minister Mr. Jobran Basile. Welcome on Euronews. Lebanon is home to more than 1.5 million Syrian refugees. Recently, your government ordered the demolition of refugees' houses in Arsal. About 5,000 families were left homeless. You led a campaign for the return of Syrian refugees to their country out of fear they would settle permanently like the Palestinians. What do you have to say on this issue? You know, Lebanon is hosting 200 refugees and displaced per square kilometer, uh, a record in, uh, in the history of humanity. And we have shown an uh, uncomparable level of generosity and hospitality, and we will do the same. We will never accept that any Syrian would be hurt or touched in his dignity. But no one can accept to have illegal construction and to turn these places into a permanent residence when we have the experience of the Palestinian camps. And this will not only affect Lebanon, this will be a place for more violence that would be exported outside, uh, outside Lebanon. So it's uh, of nobody's interest to have a permanent construction for a mass presence of the displaced Syrians. Uh, all what we want to do is to afford a dignified and a safe return for the Syrians to, to their country, where the international community should be responsible of this. And instead of discouraging the Syrians from going back, they should be encouraged that the same assistance that they are having here, they can get it in Syria upon their return in the places that are safe, and where the return is possible, they can get it, and this would be uh, much cheaper for the taxpayers in, uh, uh, in the West, in the United States and in Europe, where uh, the uh, assistance uh, could not be s sustainable forever uh, for those Syrians to stay here. So what is sustainable is that we assist them for a short period of time to return to their country, and this is their place to be. Lebanon economy is not in a good shape due to, the, to huge national debt, regional tension, the decline in tourism revenue and refugees' burden. How your government is coping with this situation to save the country from bankruptcy? Uh, I hope there won't be a, a bankruptcy. We are in a severe economic situation. We started a process of reforms and the budget of 2019, where we lowered our, uh, our deficit in the budget from 11.7 to 7.5 and from $6.3 billion to 4.5. And in the budget of 2020, which we will start discussing in uh, September 2019, we will reduce more the deficit. Uh, by reforming and reshaping our fiscal situation uh, and our budget. On the other hand, we have a huge trade deficit that we will be reducing to by applying uh, the McKinsey uh, uh, economic plan and by reducing our imports and uh, increasing our, our exports and creating a cycle of growth uh, in the country, which the Lebanese people are able to do by their resilience and by their uh, competitiveness and by their personal initiative. We are relying on a very strong uh, private sector and we will succeed. You are the leader of the Free Patriotic Movement. It's the largest Christian party in Lebanon and a strong ally to Hezbollah classified by the U.S as a terror organization. What is the cost of this alliance? 
the cost might be high on the popularity internally and on the relations with the West. But it's definitely this relation is saving the country and immuning our uh, national unity. And is avoiding Lebanon to slip in a conflict or in a civil war, something that we all have the interest to, to avoid. Uh, Hezbollah is a part, a big part, maybe the third of our population. We cannot accept to, to accuse him of uh, terrorists. Imagine accusing this th the, the big population uh, of, uh, of terrorism. As such, Hezbollah is considered from Lebanon as uh, resistance against Israel and terrorism and not to attack anybody. And I hope we will uh, uh, reach a day where uh, peace will prevail and there won't be a need for any exceptional situation whereby we cannot accept that our MPs would be sanctioned. Uh, you know, because our MPs are not terrorists. So this is the official position of, uh, uh, of Lebanon. And all of the Lebanese are partnering together with Hezbollah, not only the Free Patriotic Movement. We are all sitting in a national unity government with one ministerial declaration describing our foreign, uh, our foreign policy. And we hope to be able to convince the West to agree on a, on a policy that would not really harm Lebanon and that would lead instead of creating conflicts that would lead to more stability and peace in the region. Where does Lebanon stand amid the escalation in the region between Iran and its neighbors led by the U.S.? Is there any risk of war? Lebanon is not on any axis of confrontation. Lebanon is in a place where we, sh we can bridge the differences and where we have the interest not to have conflicts nor wars definitely in the region. So it's in our interest to keep Lebanon away from such conflicts, to preserve it and protect it. And um, on top of this, to do the efforts needed to join the efforts uh, to really not have such kind of conflicts between Iran and Saudi Arabia, which is translated confessionally in Lebanon between Sunnis and, and, and Shias. So our policy of disassociation, uh, we stick to it because it would preserve us from interfering in others' problems and others from interfering in our country and to try to avoid a war that I don't see uh, happening because the cost of the war is very, very high on everybody. Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri resignation is a matter of time, some reports say. If that happens, do you have a B plan and how President Michel Aoun will cope with the situation to avert tension nobody wants? No, we don't see at all that Prime Minister Hariri will resign. We don't want him to resign, of course not. Uh, there is uh, no reason for this. And we have an understanding in Lebanon for the first time since 1990 that the real representatives of the people should be ruling the country as per the true democ democratic rules. And this is the case for the first time since General Michel Aoun uh, has become president. So uh, Prime Minister Hariri, uh, the main constituent of, his, uh, uh, of the Sunnis in, in Lebanon, and he should stay in power. And we are helping and uh, strengthening each other so Lebanon will be a strong state and would be governed by the people who are able to lead democracy and lead uh, the economy in the country and uh, really uh, take the country towards more peace and stability. How does Lebanon see the so-called deal of century and the effect of such a deal on the fate of Palestinian refugees living in Lebanon? You know, Lebanon cannot accept the implantation of the Palestinians nor the Syrians, for sure. This is something that is existential to us and that will destroy the country con con uh, completely. And there is no interest for anybody to lose such a model as the Lebanese model of, uh, of acceptance of the other, of tolerance, and the 
of the capability to live to live together so this will eliminate all this uh, this model and cannot be imposed on us as long as the Lebanese refuse the implantation of the Palestinians this will never happen and we have the force and the ability to not let this pass if it is included in the deal uh, of the century it cannot succeed Lebanon Foreign Minister Mr. Jobran Basile, thank you. You are welcome, thank you.